Hi everybody and welcome to our class video on how to find shear and MoMA diagrams using equations. So before we get started, a quick review and reminder, what are shear and MoMA diagrams? All they are are graphical representations of how the internal shear or the internal moment on a beam due to a given load, the load's not changing, due to one specific load, how does the internal shear and how does the internal moment vary along the length? So if we look at the beam on the left with a uniform load, we can see that when we have a, unif a dis uniformly distributed load on a simply supported beam, that the maximum internal shear is going to occur right over the support and then it's just going to decrease to a negative absolute value, right? So the same magnitude, just negative, at the other support. And so it's a maximum at the supports. And so if we were to cut a bunch of sections and take a bunch of time cutting a section at zero and then at L over two or, an, well, L over eight and L over four and three L over eight and L over two, we could get all the values that we could use to plot that shear diagram so we could see how the shear internal shear varies along the length of the beam. We could also then get how the internal moment varies and in this case we could see that the internal moment is actually maximum at the center of the beam and zero at the ends and who since we have a pin and a roller really glad it's zero at the end since they can't support moment and isn't it interesting to note that the maximum moment occurs where the shear is zero? So that's kind of exciting. Now, by the same token, if we look at the beam on the right, we can see that for a point load, the shear actually is a constant value from the support to where the point load is applied. And that's this is and then after the point load, the shear changes value in this case is just a negative but the same magnitude from the first half, and then it remains constant until we get to the support. And so it's a very different looking shear diagram. Our maximum would just be P over two, our shear, and we can see anywhere along the length of the beam, we have a magnitude of P over two of shear when we just have a point load in the center. And then when we look at our moment diagram, once again, where the shear crosses zero at L over two, our moment is a maximum. But in this case, our moment increases linearly from zero to a max at the center and decreases linearly back to zero as opposed to parabolically from the uniform load. So it's actually super important that you notice that uniform load shear and moment diagrams look very different than point load shear and moment diagrams. And we'll get back to this a little bit later in the example. But just notice, they're not the same. So you can't treat a uniform load like it's a point load when you're drawing a shear and moment diagram, because it's not the same. But what I also really want you to notice is that, as we say here, notice if the load is constant, then the shear diagram could be represented by one equation. It's a nice constant line. And even the moment diagram, because the shear diagram is constant and the load is constant, the moment diagram could be represented by one equation. It's a parabolic curve. But when the load is not constant, when it has a discontinuity, it goes from the reaction at the pin to a um, point load, so it's zero between the pin and the point load, and then suddenly there's this discontinuity at the point load, the shear diagram is going to need two equations to represent it, because I have two different horizontal lines at different values, and then my moment diagram also has a discontinuity right in the middle, so I would need more than one equation to represent that. And that's really important to notice. Now, I already said that we made this cut, or these sheared moment diagrams, by making cuts at discrete points. So for here, because I kind of knew what it would look like, I only made them at L over 4, L over 2, 3 L over 4, so at every quarter points. But if you don't know what it's going to look like, if you're new to this, you probably have to make it at like 16 points. And that's a lot of work. right? We just don't want to do that. It's too much work. So instead, 
Instead, we want to write equations for the shear and moment as a function of x, like we're writing the equation of the lines that represent the curves on the shear and moment diagrams. But we have to pay attention that we're going to need unique equations every time we have a discontinuity in the load. And as long as we remember that, creating our equations is pretty straightforward. So we're going to do this by looking at a different beam. All right, so here's the beam that we're going to actually solve. It is simply supported still. We have a pin and a roller at A and B, respectively. We have a uniform load that just goes for five feet of 100 pounds per lineal foot. And then for five feet, we have a uniform load of zero. We have constantly nothing. But then at 10 feet, we have an applied moment of 1,500 foot-pounds, and then again, zero load from 10 to 15 feet, which then, of course, we'd have the reaction at B. And I've already drawn the shear and moment diagrams for this, and so, of course, we have the potential for an X and Y reaction at A and a Y reaction at B from that roller. And I went ahead and found the resultant of that point load, or I'm sorry, of the uniform load, and so I've written it out as R for resultant, and that's just that 100 pounds per lineal foot times 5 feet, or 500 pounds. And of course, the resultant is going to act in the centroid of that shape. It happens to be a rectangle, so the centroid is just in the center. So it's going to be 2.5 feet from A. But this is really important. We can turn that uniform load into a point load, a resultant, just to do the statics, but when we start making our cuts, we got to turn it back into a uniform load, because if you remember the previous slide, the shear and moment diagram looks very different if we have a uniform load versus if we have a point load, so super important. So let's go ahead and do some statics. And so this statics is to just find our support reactions because they're going to affect the internal shear and internal moment because those are additional loads acting on the beam. So the force at x, some force in the x gives us that ax is equal to zero. That's no big deal. We can sum moments at b then to get ay. And if you've noticed, I've picked that clockwise will be positive just for this summing moments expression. And remember, it doesn't matter whether I do clockwise or counterclockwise when I'm just writing a simple sum moments equal to zero expression. I just don't want to add a clockwise to a counterclockwise moment or vice versa, right? So we just have to pick a direction we call positive so that clockwise sum and counterclockwise sum, but they subtract from each other. And so if we look at this, we're going to have our AY times 15 feet. We're going to have our 100 pounds per lineal foot times 5 feet, that's our resultant, and we've already established it acts two and a half feet from A, so it's going to be twelve and a half feet from B, and then let's not forget we have just an applied moment, 1500 foot-pounds, so if we're writing a moment expression and we have an applied moment anywhere on our beam, even if it right at B, anywhere on our beam, we have to add that in as well, and it doesn't have a distance, it's already a moment, we just add it in. And so we set that equal to zero, and we're going to find that our AY rounds up to 317 pounds. So then we can just sum forces in the Y, and that's just going to give us our 317 pounds. We can subtract the 500 pounds from the uniform load, add in our BY, and we're going to get back out that our BY is 183 pounds. So here's what we're going to do, folks. We're not going to be able to fit all of this into two, into one single 15-minute slot. So at this point, I'm going to stop this video, and we're going to create another one, so it'll be part two. And the nice thing is, if you ever want to go back and review how to write the equations of shear and moment, the second half starts right after we have all the statics, all the stuff you know how to do, so you'll jump right in, and we'll start drawing the shear and moment. So this is the end of part one, so go ahead and close this out, review the statics if you need to first, and then open up part two.